air bows are more popular than ever. With innovation, these bows have been modified to serve the user's purpose and improve their hunting experience. These weapons come in a variety of shapes, sizes, pulling mechanisms, and most importantly, they have different calibers and shooting speeds. Choosing the right air bow can be an easy task when money is not an issue. If you are willing to spend a large sum, whatever you choose to buy will most certainly have a quality standard above average. That is if you go with a well-known manufacturer, of course. The real headache begins when your budget is limited and therefore you need to find the air bow that will give you the most bang for your buck. Don't worry though, we have taken the boring part of doing an extensive research out of the equation and we provide you with the best air bow for the money for every possible budget. We analyzed hunting forums and archery forums to make a summary of the best air bows available on the market today. Hi, I'm Chip Honeycutt with Crosman Corporation, and new is the Benjamin Pioneer Airbow. This is an air gun that shoots arrows up to 450 feet per second. It's a regulated air gun that we fill to 3,000 psi of air. We slip an arrow over the barrel, and then it's, it's this easy to cock with just two fingers. That's it, we're ready to go. To decock it, just pull the lever back, hold the trigger, and now you're safe. Now this gun is shooting arrows, uh, eight arrows, at a steady 450 feet per second, and you can get a couple of more that are still traveling over 400 feet per second. At 50 yards, it's getting two, inches, uh, two inch groups and still traveling at 400 feet per second. Today, we're covering the Umarex Javelin. And guess what? Yes, it's an air gun, but it doesn't shoot pellets. This baby shoots arrows. So what I'm gonna do is take you over here. We set up a little table and we're gonna shoot some targets out here in the woods. What I wanna do is go over and cover some of the features that we have on here. This thing is really, really cool. So come on, let's go do it. All right, this is my favorite part. I get to tell you about all the features on this. And this actually has some pretty good features. So starting at the back, we just slide it back. You got an adjustable buttstock. Almost everything nowadays, you can adjust it. So depending on the size of the person that's shooting it, you can make it longer, you can make it shorter. Works out great. Pistol grip. This pistol grip actually feels nice. Helps you hold it pretty stable. If I pull this out in this position here, feels really stable and I can keep it on the, on the target. On, when you move up from the pistol grip here, we have the safety, which the safety is right by your finger here. The one thing with the safety is you can't reach it with your thumb on the opposite side. So when you get ready to fire, you just press this thing in and then you're ready to fire. Once you pull the trigger, it has to be cocked again before you can fire it and load another uh, bolts inside there. So we can push it back in from the opposite side. The one thing about the bolt is it's ambidextrous. I can move it from to the left side or on the right side. All you have to do is unscrew it and then screw it back in on the opposite side. Uh, line up the screws and the threads and you're good to go. Moving up on top here as we're kind of moving forward, it does come with a, a set of peep sights on it. I recommend if you're going to do any hunting with this, at least get yourself a red dot or go out there and get yourself an optic. You probably just need a, a three times zoom on your optic or a three by or something like that. Uh, and it's a peak and tinny rail, so you can place it anywhere along in here. Or if you want some custom peep sights, you can do that also. Along the sides here, there's an M lock. And I like the M locks down the side because there's a lot of things that you can actually attach to that. And I'll show you how I kind of set up my hunt and gun here in a second. So moving down from here, we go down to this. This is the cylinder cover. And all we do is slide that off. You press the button right there. That exposes the cylinder and I'm going to start releasing it. So I'm going to twist the cylinder. And I'll start to feel, hear a little bit of air come out. I 
I can hear it leaking a little bit. I bleed off the excess that's inside there. Cylinder off there, and then I, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take a brand new one. Line this thing back up. Spin it the opposite direction. And there's kind of a guide, if you look along here along the bottom, that guide kind of lines you up to make sure you're perpendicular, so you're actually lined up with where the, uh, the threads are. All right, and I can hear it charge through there. All right, so now I got the cylinder loaded back up. You can feel it when you hear it. You'll actually hear the, ch the charge of the air come out of the cylinder, and it goes right into here where the manifold is, and that'll actually, you can actually hear the air charge up inside of here where it holds the charge. So when I, as soon as I get done with that, I want to slide the cylinder cover back over the end and it just locks right back in place. Once you lock it in place, you're good to go. One thing I will tell you is when you get out in the cold weather, so if you're hunting anything under like about 70 degrees, 65 degrees, this area here is where you want to keep warm. So if you have it wrapped up with something, if you have those hand warmers or foot warmers that you have, you can put, you know, put that down here, maybe put some uh, camo tape around it or something, and that'll actually keep the cylinder warm and it'll actually keep the, uh, the manifold warm that's right here, so it actually charges up uh, into here. Because this area here, after you fire it a couple times, you'll start to feel this cool down. On a day like today, I don't really need it, but if it's really cold outside, you're hunting you know, sub, sub 65, sub 70, somewhere in that area, uh, you can warm it up. But that's if you're shooting a lot of shots right in a row. Uh, if you're just going out for one shot, obviously temperature affects uh, the pressure inside the cylinder. So what do we do from here? I got this thing loaded up, it's charged up, ready to go. The arrows are, they're 14 point inches or the bolts are 14.8 inches long. So on the front of the gun here, you can see this little air tube. You just line it up over the top and slide it down. So once we slide it down in this position, if you don't lock it in, the arrow will slide off the end. When I say lock it in, there's a little O-ring down there. When you press, it just locks into position. Now, if you are using a broadhead, make sure you're careful because down here on the end will be a broadhead. You'll have to reach up high here and push it back into position until it pops in place uh, or you can push it against a tree or whatever you want to do while you're out there. So right now I've got it loaded up. I've got the gun ready to go. Fresh tank. All I have to do is charge it, take the safety off, put it down range on target and I'm good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and charge it. Take the safety off and That's how it works. Again, I'll put the safety on. Make sure you always have the safety on before you load your arrows. I think that's important. Uh, and then on top of that, make sure you don't pre-charge it prior to putting your arrows on. Those are just some safety tips that you guys have out there. Other than that, that's the features of the gun. Super light. You can walk around with this thing all day long. Probably the lightest thing that you'll see out there uh, on the market, just in any gun in general. It feels nice. It's got a great shape. I love the way this thing performs and it's really simple to use. And how many shots do you get out of it? Approximately 30. So it depends. It depends on if it's a cold day or if it's a really hot day. If it's a really hot day, this baby's screaming coming out of here. On the next segment here, what I'll do is go ahead and talk about, uh, we'll just see actually how fast this thing is shooting. How many feet per second is this baby putting out? All right, so you're probably wondering how fast does this thing shoot? It is using a CO2 cylinder. So for power with 88 grams of CO2, what I'll do is do a, a three-shot string, run it on a chronograph, and then tell you exactly what we get. We'll kind of get an average out of there. I said 320 feet per second, so we're gonna be right in that area. Uh, the temperature today is probably about 65 degrees, somewhere in that area. So what I wanna do when I make sure when I'm loaded again is make sure that that safety is on, so it should be protruding on the shot side of the gun or your finger side of the, the gun. And then on top of here, make sure there's a little pressure, make sure it's not cocked. And then from there, I just go ahead and take the bolt, Slide it over the tip, make sure it knocks into position. Look how easy this thing charges. One hand, pull it back, it's good to go. Safety off, let's see what the first one brings. Three hundred and thirty-three feet per second. That's on the first one, so safety back on.
Always keep this gun pointed down range. Okay, lock it back in place, cock it. Three hundred and thirty-two feet per second. We're hanging pretty tight there. I like that. I like it a lot. Load up another area. Oh, I got to make sure I put the safety back on. I'm not charging it yet. Make sure it presses in on the end. I feel that little bit of resistance. It kind of pops onto there. Good to go. Rack it. Safety off. Three hundred and twenty feet per second. So with the three-shot string, we shot 333, 332, and 320 feet per second. So that's about the range we're going to get. Somewhere in that area, 320, it'd be about 325 feet per second, roughly. Uh, after you put a fresh tank in there, it's good. This thing is absolutely awesome. Make sure I put my safety back on. God, this thing's amazing. The best thing I like about it, the fact of the weight. I can't get over how light this thing is and performance wise. And this thing's accurate. The grouping on them, it's pretty darn good. So let me show you real quick to kind of wrap this thing up. Let me show you what my uh, hunting rig, what looks like. And this is the prototype I had here. We got a quiver on the side so I can carry it with arrows. It does add a little bit of weight to it. On top of that, with an optic added to the top, this is a three time mag magnification on top. Uh, I like this and I put the charging bolt on this side here so I can charge it with my left hand as I'm holding it uh, with my right hand. So that's kind of how it looks from there. I got my broadheads and a safety cover up in the front. This is my hunting rig. I did take a pig with it, about 65 pound pig. Shot him right from the front. Uh, it worked amazing. He went about 25 yards and went down. That's perfect. So what you guys need to do is go in and check it out. You guys are going to see this. It's the Air Javelin. The Air Javelin. You guys have got to go check this dude out. It's well worth the money and it's absolutely amazing. I got the Umarex Air Saber. This thing is built for hunting, hunting, hunting. I'm, fi I'm fired up. It's got a 3,600 pound tank for a reservoir on there. It shoots 30 shots. It comes with three arrows, 350 grain arrows. All you have to do, go buy your broadheads, put them on there. It's good to go. On top of that, it comes with a scope. Mount your scope, load your tank up there, refill your tank, get that thing ready to go, slide the arrow down the end, and you're ready to fire off at this thing. It's a 4x32 Axion scope. The fit and feel on this thing is absolutely amazing. This is just at first glance. I'm excited to shoot it, so let's go shoot this thing. It's getting hot. I wouldn't call it hot, but it ain't cold. All right, so my favorite part, sitting at the range. Let's start with, uh, just break down all the features on this gun here. We're going to start again, butt to muzzle, uh, and start out with this. Overall, it's got like a pistol grip stock here, but if you if you look from this end of it here, there's a little connector piece that goes in there. It feels like a little bit better stability. I can rest my hand against it. The stock feels a little bit thin, and it feels great. Everything you know, I don't I don't like my stocks bolty. This thing actually snugs up perfect. It's got a nice padded butt stock on the end. You won't need it. I promise you that. Nice. Uh, you see this chrome bolt that you have here? You rotate this up, pull it back. It'll actually charge it. And then on top of that, you got a 4x32 Axion scope. Comes with the gun. All you have to do is mount it up. My recommendation when you mount this thing up is put it a little bit further back on the rail because the gun's not going to scope you. Put it a little bit further back on the rail. You go from there. Trigger feels really nice. At least the texture and the touch on it does. It should be good to go. On the bottom down here, you have your gauge. And your gauge shows you how much air you actually have in it. And uh, moving on up forward here, you can mount up Picatinny rails. Uh, it actually comes on that. And then you can, if you want to, I got a quiver attachment attached to mine. So I can actually attach my quiver while I'm out hunting. I don't have to carry anything on my back. It protects my broadheads. It does everything for me. On top of that, this whole chamber here is where the arrow slides down into it. And it protects the air tube that's inside the center. So you're probably wondering at this point here, how do I charge this thing up? because you don't see any foster fittings or anything like that. So what they actually send you is they send you a little kit that has O-rings. You got some O-rings and then on top of that, you also have a foster fitting connector in there with a probe that actually goes into it. 
So all I have to do on my little tank here is take this connector, plug it right into the end, it locks into place, and I thought this was gonna be a little bit harder. I'll rotate that over, and all you have to do is slide it down until it locks into place. Once you kind of lock, it locks into place, you can feel it kind of smooth out, and then all I do is turn the handle here, and I'll go ahead and charge it up. I've already got a full charge in this thing. It's sitting at 3,600 pounds right now, so I'm good to go. I won't need that, but we'll charge it up here in a little bit. But that's all I do is charge it, bleed off my air at that point, pull the probe back out, and I'm good to go. So once I do that, the best part about this thing is these arrows, I don't even know how to describe the quality in these arrows. They are, I mean, they feel robust. They're kind of thick. They, they feel absolutely amazing. And if you look at the fletching on them, it's real sleek. So these babies are going to rip. So all I do is line it up from here. Slide it right down the end. Feel that little click that goes into the end of the, once it gets all the way over the end of the, uh, the air tube, it clicks into place so it holds it. If I'm up in a tree stand and I'm aiming down, it's not going to fall out. That's another thing that I like. On top of that, the next thing I have to do is go ahead and charge this thing and send it on its way. But you know what? Let's just go ahead and set up the range down here. I'll set up 25, 50, and then uh, out there at 100. And let's see what we can put this thing through its paces and see how far we can actually shoot it, what the accuracy looks like. Okay, one thing, I'm ready to shoot this thing, but one thing I wanted to point out was the safety. The safety is actually on the trigger. So you look at the silver part right here, at the very top of the trigger, inside the, the trigger well, right there is where the safety button is. I push it to the right, that baby's ready to fire, you're good to go. You want to put it on safe, you just push it from the other side, it puts it back in a safe position. So let me charge this thing. Pull it back, a little more pressure in the spring here. Take it off of safety and let's try it at 25 yards. <laughs> I love it. That thing's got some speed. I can feel a little bit more push on this thing here, but we're pushing 350 grains, so why wouldn't it? All right, let me safe this up and we'll go down and check the target. All right, we're out of 50 yards here. Next one's my favorite, hogs. Let's go ahead and load up another arrow. All right, this thing's good to go. All right, safety's in the on position. Go ahead and charge it. So we're out at about 50 yards here. I'm gonna hold dead on, same as what I was shooting at, uh, at 25, and we'll see how this hits. Let's go check it out. Put the gun back on safe. All right, let's go take a look. Ooh. Holy smokes. All right, we got a dead pig. I like that. So now we're, what we're gonna do is push out to the, uh, the white tail. He's out there at distance. Inside the scope, I have some, uh, some lines inside there that actually I can use to make my adjustments. Uh, at 50 yards, that thing was exactly where I aimed and put it. So we'll see out at 100 yards here. I'm actually gonna probably hold over a little bit on uh, out at 100 yards just to make sure. We do have a little bit of wind today, so there might be a little bit of drift. Uh, we'll see. Click. Check my air. We're looking good. That thing hardly uses any air. I guess if you're getting 30 shots out of it, that's freaking awesome. All right. So we're wrapping up the day here. It's starting to get a little bit chilly. Almost time to head home. So uh, just out shooting the gun. My, my very first thoughts of this thing, if I look at the fit and finish on it, absolutely amazing. The slim line to it, 
It's not a beef or fat, beefy or fat gun. It just feels absolutely amazing when you're holding it. Very, very, very natural. I like that. And the balance on it, it's balanced very, very well. Uh, on top of that, I think the overall design, it doesn't feel bulky up in here. The charging system, you do get a probe. It slides right in real easy. There's no crazy connectors or anything like that. Slides right in, charges right up. When, when you start talking about speed on this thing, this thing will go 460 you know, feet per second. That's on the high end and you know, 470, somewhere in that area. But if you guys are running it, at the, that's at the max pressure. So if you're shooting your 100 yard shots, you wanna make sure that you're at your, your 3,625, running at 3,600 PSI, and then do your 100 yard shots at that. For sighting in the gun for accuracy purposes, what I would do is I would actually sight it in at 25, make sure you're on. Because uh, you're, you're going to pump through some of these if you're out shooting in the woods. Make sure you have a good backstop, maybe have some hay bales or something back there. But I would sight it in probably at 50 yards if that's what you're using for the hunting distance. And then you can hold under at 25, and then you'll have to hold a little bit when you get out there at, uh, at 100 yards. It has no problem. It definitely groups. That's one of the things it does. If you make a if I make a mistake, then that's where, usually where the error is. Uh, it, it's errors on me. For the sound, I, I guess if I have to place the sound in something there. It's not as loud as a big bore. Uh, it's actually pretty quiet, but the, the shroud kind of takes a lot of that, that sound down a little bit, but it's not as loud as a big bore. Uh, it's a little bit louder than most of your like 25 caliber PCPs. If you want to compare it to anything that's out there on the market right now, uh, it's great. In the scope, there is some, uh, some things here. Just kind of finish it up when, you're, uh, when you mount the scope, scope up, you can put it forward or backwards. Once you get the scope mounted, you do have some, some bars in there that you can line things up. You're gonna to have to figure out how that works for you, depending on where you sight it in. If you sight it in at 25 yards, there's gonna be a holdover. You know, if you're going out at, uh, at 50 yards, at 75 and 100. You just have to know, have your good dope. And after that, I have no problem with this thing. It's gonna be a lethal gun. Uh, Umarex Air Saber. It's really amazing, honestly.